The Human Newton's Cradle, brought to you by the Society of Physics Students, SPS, at Rhodes College in Memphis, Tennessee. One of the classic demonstrations in physics is something called Newton's Cradle. One of the cool things about the demonstration is that it's only the balls on the ends that seem to move very much. The balls in the center stay relatively stationary. Also note that when one of the end balls makes a collision, it comes to an almost complete stop. Our SPS chapter at Rhodes decided it would be fun to try to make a Newton's Cradle using humans instead of little steel balls. Specifically, we wanted to see what happens when one person running at some speed V1 collides into a line of four other people. Would the runner be stopped? And would the last person in line take off? Let's take a quick look at the physics involved in collisions. The simplest collision is a one-dimensional collision between two objects or two bodies, just labeled here as one and two. And by one dimension, what we mean is that all the motion is assumed to take place along the dash line shown here. In this specific example, we assume that the two objects have the same mass m, and that the second object or second body is initially at rest. So what do you think will happen after the collision, after object one collides with object two? As it turns out, the answer depends on whether or not the collision is elastic or inelastic. A perfectly inelastic collision, which is what we're considering here, is one in which the objects stick together after the collision. Using an idea in physics called conservation of momentum, it can be shown that after the collision, the two objects move together to the right with a final velocity that is equal to half of the initial velocity of the first object. However, the collisions we see in the Newton's Cradle demonstration are not inelastic collisions. They're actually closer to a perfectly elastic collision. In a perfectly elastic two-body collision, the first object comes to a stop after the collision, and the second object moves off with a final velocity equal to the initial velocity of the first object. All of this assumes that the two objects, or two bodies, have the same masses m. If you're interested in why all this happens, it is based on two concepts, the conservation of momentum and the conservation of kinetic energy. An equation for a two-body collision is shown. Momentum is defined as the product of the mass times the velocity of an object. And conservation of momentum says that, under the right conditions, the total momentum of the system after the collision should be equal to the total momentum of the system before the collision. The second uh, concept is the conservation of kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is conserved only during perfectly elastic collisions. And kinetic energy is defined as the product of one half times the mass times the velocity squared. In the two-body collision that we considered earlier, the initial velocities of the two objects are known, V1 initial and V2 initial, and also the masses are the same, so they divide out. This leaves us with two unknowns, the final velocities of the two objects, v1 final and v2 final. And given that we have two equations and two unknowns, that allows us to solve for the two unknowns, v1 final and v2 final. When you do this, you'll find that v1 final equals zero, and v2 final equals the uh, initial velocity of object one, v1 initial. The first object stops, and the second object takes off with the same speed that the first object had initially. So what about three masses, a three-body collision? Well, in the case of perfectly elastic collisions, object one will collide into object two and stop. Object two will then move off the same velocity that object one originally had, and it will collide with object three. What do you think will happen after object two collides with object three? Well, you guessed it, object two will stop and all of its velocity will be transferred to object three. What if we had four or five or six objects? Well, we would expect a similar chain reaction to occur in which the velocity of the first object is completely transferred to object two and then the second object transfers all of its velocity to object three and so on and so on. Now, it's worth mentioning that while we describe velocity as being transferred from one object to another, 
It's really momentum that's being transferred. We can talk about velocity transfer because the objects all have the same mass. Okay, so back to this idea of a human Newton's cradle. The idea, at least as it's shown here, probably won't work. Do you know why? Well, it's because Newton's cradle relies on elastic collisions. When human bodies collide, the collision typically is much more inelastic than elastic. And the end result will look something like this. This is not such a great way to simulate a Newton's cradle. It's not a great way to make friends either. Knowing that we needed to make the collisions more elastic, we obtained some bubble suits for our volunteers. If you haven't seen bubble suits before, you will in just a minute. They are basically a large inflatable sphere that surrounds a person's body. You can find some funny videos on YouTube where people play soccer and do other activities wearing these bubble suits. The videos are funny because when the people run into each other, they bounce off. The collisions are elastic. So for our demonstration, we obtained five bubble suits and five volunteers. We also had to find volunteers who had close to the same mass. If the demonstration is successful, then volunteer one should come to a stop after the collision, and volunteer five should be ejected with about the same speed that volunteer one initially had. Volunteers two, three, and four should not move very much just like in the real Newton's cradle. Okay, let's see what happens. So there you go, a human Newton's cradle, or at least a pretty close approximation. Here's a couple things that we learned from doing the demonstration. You may have noticed that the volunteers in the line are all facing away from the runner, away from volunteer one. We found that when they faced the runner, they had more of a tendency to brace themselves against the collision, which interfered with the momentum transfer. Physically, what is happening is that they are increasing their frictional interaction with the ground. Conservation momentum assumes that frictional forces like this are negligible. Also, since there is still a lot of friction in the demonstration, we cheated a little bit by having our heaviest volunteer be the runner and our lightest volunteer to be at the end of the line. So what's next? Well, it's already been suggested to us that we should try hanging our volunteers from a ceiling like this to make it more like a real Newton's cradle. We actually might give this a try, given enough encouragement. Finding volunteers, however, is becoming a little bit difficult. Well, thank you for watching this video. We hope that you enjoyed the demonstration. Our SPS chapter at Rhodes College would like to thank the National Office of the Society of Physics Students, the Rhodes College Department of Physics, Rhodes Student Allocations, which help support this activity, and then, of course, all of our volunteers in the demonstration, especially poor volunteer number five.